What's going on guys, Quality XA here today and today I'm bringing you guys a brand new video on Destiny 2. Now today we're going to be talking about the update 1.1.4, specifically going over every single patch note which has actually come out in this. Now there is a load of stuff to take in so sit back, relax and as always I do hope you enjoy this video. Let's get right into this. So first up we have strikes. So Nightfall Strike Unique Rewards. Possible rewards include legendary weapons and exotic accessories. The drop rates increase in likelihood based on score threshold. Moving on, we have strike repetition reduction. Players will no longer see the same strikes back to back in strike playlist. Moving on to the challenge card, we have increased power handicap maximum from 40 to 45. There's also been a fixed issue where Tree of Probabilities wouldn't end immediately after Valas Thun's death if he was killed very quickly. There's also been a fixed issue where players could respawn below the boss fight of a Garden World. There's also been a fixed issue where vehicles were not rewarding points when destroyed and fixed an issue where orbs granted points in public areas. Really cool indeed now, some good changes there. I'm really excited for the Nightfall Strike unique rewards. Talking about that, they did mention exotic accessories. Now, from what I know, exotic accessories actually means things such as a ghost. I'm not 100% sure if it means sparrows, but I know ghosts are 100% in the exotic accessories tab. Not sure what else could be in there. And also having the challenge card increased with power handicap is actually pretty cool indeed. There's definitely going to be some people using that and seeing if they can solo it on that difficulty. I'd be very intrigued if anyone does play on a high power cap. Let me know if you guys do. Now moving on to other. So exotic repetition reduction. Protections were put in place that prevent back-to-back -back duplicate exotics from exotic engrams. Fixed an issue where some emblems were not displaying what statistic they track. The Prometheus lens correctly appears in the exotic weapon collection for players who acquired the item from Zert without owning Curse of Osiris. Reduced interaction time for patrol beacons and activity totems from 3 seconds to 1 second. And there was also a fixed issue where applying or previewing a shader on an item would return players to the top of the page of the shader inventory. Definitely something that needed to be fixed there. Also some other good fixes here, the exotic repetition reduction, obviously a big one. I do believe I've got every single exotic in the game now, so it doesn't affect me too much. But when I do get a new DLC, I'm obviously going to be going for them new exotics, so we'll be pretty handy for that. And some, yeah, really good changes in that other tab. Now, moving on to the sandbox, specifically first we have the weapons, so pulse rifles. Increase PvE damage for all pulse rifles by 16%. Increase rate of fire for adaptive and high impact pulse rifles. Adaptive from 360 rounds per minute to 390 rounds per minute. The high impact from 320 rounds per minute to 340 rounds per minute. There's also been increased base damage for adaptive, high impact and rapid fire pulse rifles. So the adaptive from 14.5 to 16, high damage from 16 to 18, and rapid fire from 12 to 12.5. There's also been increased precision multiplier for lightweight pulse rifles from 1.5 to 1.6. Decreased precision multiplier for adaptive pulse rifles from 1.55 to 1.475. There's also a design note, so this keeps precision damage close to where it is now, when you factor in the base damage and rate of fire buffs above. This puts most of the buff into body shots, but in the end, this still increases precision damage overall. Moving on to scout rifles, we have increased PvE damage for all scout rifles by 15%. We've also got increased base damage for high impact scout rifles from 37 to 40%. Moving on to hand cannons, we've got increased PvE damage for all hand cannons by 15%. Precision hand cannons deal 0.15% more precision damage, increasing them from 1.5 to 1.6. Increased hip fire accuracy when using controllers on console and PC by 33% and increased aim down sight accuracy when using controllers on console and PC by 25%. Moving on to the sidearms, we have increased PVE damage for all sidearms by 15%. Increased hip fire accuracy, reduced the cone by 20%. Increased aim down sight accuracy, reduced cone by 12%. Increased inventory, allowing for more reserve ammo. 
increase range fall off to start by 1 meter and increase the aim down sight movement speed. Moving on to the SMGs, we have increased PVE damage for all submachine guns by 10%. We've got set optics to 1.3 times, increased inventory as well, allowing for more reserves. Moving on to the linear fusion rifles, we have increased PVE damage for all linear fusion rifles by 50%. We've got increased aim assist and decreased flinch multiplier. Moving on to the shotguns, we have increased PVE damage for all shotguns by 35%. Increased inventory allowing for more reserve ammo and also increased aim assist on the Surus Precision shotguns. Moving on to the snipers we have increased PVE damage by 20% for yellow bar enemies and by 40% for red bar enemies. There's also increased precision damage which now scales with the weapon's rate of fire. Changed from 2.5% for everything to 3.0% at the lowest rate of fire up to 3.5% at the high rate of fire. There's also increased aim assist and increased inventory allowing for more ammo to actually be stored. Next up we have grenade launchers so there's been an increased blast radius as well as drum fed grenade launchers by 0.5 meters and one shot grenade launchers by 1 meter. Moving on to the Mida Mini Tool, there's been decreased the Mida Mini Tool's optics to match other submachine guns, prevented the stacking of lightweight and the Mida's Mini Tool's lightweight perks, adjusted player movement speed to match the Mida Multi Tool, and auto rifles have been decreased range by 10 for all precision auto rifles and decreased aim assist for all precision auto rifles in general. So some absolutely huge changes for the weapons there. Let me know what your favourite is. I'm definitely going to be using pulse rifles a lot more. They definitely look like the go-to gun in the meta that they have actually made here. But very excited to try a load of new weapons out. Let me know what you're going to try in that comment section below. Now moving on to the perks. So scaled up PVE damage for the following perks. High impact reserves from 1.12 to 1.30. We've got kill clip from 1.33 to 1.53 and as well as that we've got rampage from 1.33 at 3 stacks to 1.65 while at 3 stacks. Also increased duration from 3 seconds to 3.5. Moving on we have dragonfly so buff damage from 50 to 65 and you've also got 30% additional damage against combatants and as well as that updated FX. Moving on to explosion rounds, you've got decreased PVE explosive rounds damage multiplied by 15% and increased PVE damage for the base weapons to compensate for this decrease. Next we have Grave Robber, reloads 50% of the magazine instead of 30% and then last but not least we have Timed Payload, splits the damage 55, 45, explosive slash direct instead of previous split which was more direct damage. So some really good changes in the perks as well. I definitely think Dragonfly is going to be one of the perks that you want to look out for on your weapons. And I'll definitely recommend using some of them from this update. It does sound like a very buffed up perk, especially with that buffed up damage, which is huge. Moving on to the abilities. So there's increased super regeneration rates from 640 minutes to 5 minutes. The output of every increment of the mobility stat from 2 to 10 has been increased, allowing for a significant boost in the player's speed. Vanishing Step and Vanishing Smoke, dodging is going to remain unchanged and still breaks both aim assist and projectile tracking for the duration of the actual dodge itself. The invisibility granted by Vanishing Step no longer breaks aim assist or projectile tracking in PvP, still works the same in PvE. There's also increased the duration of invisibility granted by Vanishing Step by 1 second and increased the duration of Smirk Bomb invisibility by 1 second as well. There's also increased movement speed of melee supers, so things such as Fist of Havoc, Sentinel Shield and Arc Staff. While these supers are active, sprint speed is automatically set to the fastest possible. Sprint speed, no additional perks are needed. Characters automatically sprint when you request forward movement. Increase movement acceleration to reach max speed almost instantly. So pretty insane. These supers are going to be pretty overpowered, the melee supers. You're going to be moving extremely fast with these, which I'm pretty glad about because they definitely needed a buff. I do believe they're some of the most underused supers currently in the game. So uh, yeah, some really big changes there. 
Moving on now to the subclasses, we have the Titan. So increase the distance the player travels with an untargeted airborne shoulder charge attack. Shield Bash, Seismic Strike and Hammer Strike back to 4.5 meters. On the lifts, we have Strafe Lift and increased stop speed of Strafe Lift. And Catapult Lift has increased the initial horizontal acceleration gained from activating Catapult Lift and increased the amount of time Catapult Lift can be active to allow for more control. Moving on to the Hunter, we have Arc Staff has been increased the speed of the Arc Staff dodge animation. You've also got increased speed of all Arc Staff attack animations, and for Arc Staff super cast animation and all Arc Staff melee attacks, reduce the amount of time you're locked in animations before you can move or attack. There's also increase the area of effect range on all Arc Staff attacks. Moving on to the Warlock, we have the Glide overall and increase the initial extension of vertical speed gained from activating Glide to allow for quick on-demand bursts of speed. The Strafe Glide has an increased top speed of the Strafe Glide itself. You've also got greatly increased the horizontal acceleration of Strafe Glide to allow for more in-air maneuverability. Increase the Strafe Glide's max height to match other vertical movements. You've also got for the Burst Glide, greatly increase the top speed of the Burst Glide higher than the Strafe Glide's top speed. For Balance Guide, you've got Recalibration to gain some of the added speed of Burst Glide and some of the added horizontal acceleration of Strafe Glide. Design note, our intent for, is for Balance Glide to have some of the properties of both Burst and Strafe Glide without being as potent as either version. So again, some really good changes here, especially movement ones. The Warlock's definitely going to be much faster as well as the other classes, but the Warlock does definitely look like it's got the most changes specifically to their glides, which is really awesome indeed. Speaking about the Warlock, moving on to the Dawnblade, there is decrease the cost of throwing sword projectiles with the Daybreak Super, allowing for an additional throw. Increase the super duration extension gained from Everlasting Flames perk by 20%. The buff granted by the Swift Strike melee ability now removes all in-air accuracy penalties while active. Decrease the Icarus dash cooldown from 10 seconds to 6 and increase the grenade and melee energy that Heat Rises gives you from per kill to 16%. There's also been a fixed issue where players could throw infinite numbers of Nova Bombs in Mayhem, a definite change that was needed, and I'm glad that they have fixed that out. Moving on to the mods, mods that can affect ability regen rates for grenades, melee and class abilities now have increased output for 16.667 per mod. They still cap at 3 mods, 50% faster regeneration rate, really awesome indeed. Moving on now to the Crucible, we actually have a weekly featured playlist. Each week it will actually rotate among Rumble, Mayhem and the Iron Banner playlist, which is really awesome indeed. We've also got Crucible repetition reduction, as well as some quitter penalties. So if you guys do quit a competitive Crucible game while in progress, you will result in getting a warning or a 30 minute suspension from competitive and Osiris competitive playlist. There's also been added invisible physics and kill volumes to keep players inside the intended playable area on a number of maps. Moving on to the Iron Banner, it now features 6v6, the time limit is 12 minutes, the score limit is 125 points, the respawn time is 7 seconds, all control zones start off as neutral, additional guardians max of 3 in a zone increases the capture speed, the Emperor's Respite has now been removed from the Iron Banner Control playlist. Moving on to Power Ammo, we have recurring side crate respawn times reduced from 90 seconds to 45 seconds and initial side crate respawn times reduced from 90 seconds to 30 seconds. Next on to the Crucible gameplay and ammo improvements, the quick play known as Clash Control and Supremacy match length has been extended to 10 minutes with score limits adjusted accordingly. So again, Crucible is looking pretty decent indeed, especially the Iron Banner. I'm really excited to play Iron Banner 6v6 to see how it actually fares out in this game. 
I'm really excited about the control as well, adjusting it so you need more guardians, a max of three, to capture a point faster. That was definitely needed. I really do not understand why they actually changed that in the original game, but very exciting indeed. Now moving on to all of the game modes, increased assist and kill credit time from 2 seconds to 2.5 seconds, increased super energy granted to players for both kills and assist, Players who are defeated while carrying power ammo will lose all of their power ammo and drop 50% of it on the ground as a brick. This brick is visible to all players and anyone can pick it up. The brick expires after 30 seconds. The brick requires a full 0.25 second interaction instead of a passive walkover and this interaction can be interrupted if the player takes damage. Very awesome indeed, it just means that somebody can't just run over there really quickly and swipe ammo. They do have to stand there for just like a tiny bit just to pick up this power ammo and it will make for some interesting battles. And definitely everyone's going to be careful around their teammates that do have this power ammo because everyone is definitely going to be waiting for people to die to collect it. Very awesome and it is just a huge game changer in my honest opinion. Moving on now to some of the more crucible stuff, so quick play all of the modes. So the match length has been extended to 10 minutes with the score limits adjusted accordingly. Respawn time for all quick play game modes has gone down from 5 to 2 seconds. Recurring side crate spawn times have been reduced from 90 to 60 seconds. Neutral crates for clash supremacy are unchanged. The player super display has been removed from the HUD. Players can still get access to this information in the death screen while in nav mode when their ghost is out. The player super display remains unchanged in competitive. Moving on to control, there is reduced initial side crate power ammo respawn times from 90 to 30 seconds. Change the amounts of super energy players get for capturing zones. Players on the capturing team get slightly less than before. Players participating in the capture itself get two times that amount. Moving on to Clash or Supremacy, the initial side crate power ammo respawns times is reduced from 90 seconds to 60 seconds. Now on to competitive, including Trials of the Nine, all game modes, Tracker is now turned off. Design note, this is to enable more flanking and expression of individual power. On the survival, there is reduced recurring natural crate spawn times from 75 to 45 seconds and reduced respawn time to 7 seconds. On to countdown, there has been reduced recurring side crate respawn times from 60 to 45 seconds and lowered revive lockout time from 20 seconds to 7 seconds. Players will also no longer lose revive tokens on death, making countdown a much more fun game mode in my honest opinion. And just in general, there is some really, really exciting changes for Crucible. With that taking the radar and HUD off, that's definitely going to make it a very, very interesting game mode now. And change a load of stuff on how you play. Not just how you play, but how you think about playing. There's a load of stuff which goes into this, and it makes for some very exciting and really cool battles, I can imagine. So very excited for that. And then last but not least, guys, we have the Crucible Power Ammo Crate changes. So, rockets now only have one rocket. The drum-fed grenade launchers stay at four grenades. Single-shot grenade launchers now have six grenades, which may be capped by the weapon inventory size. Sniper rifles now have six shots. Shotguns have five shots. Slug shotguns have six shots. Fusion rifles have five bursts. And Wallcliff coil stays at one volley. The swords now have six swings. Linear fusion rifles now have four shots. The Prospector now has eight grenades. The Legend of Acrius now has four shots. The Tractor Cannon now has six shots. The Colony stays at four shots. The Darcy now actually has eight shots. And the Borealis, that actually has eight shots as well. Very awesome, some really cool patch notes here. Very interesting. Let me know what your biggest change is. I think the movement has just added a whole new layer to Crucible as well as PvE indeed. You're definitely going to be noticing a lot more players running around and hiding and just some quick kills, moving around the map really swiftly, getting more kills. And even when you participate in PvE now, it's definitely going to be 
more based on movement and how you can get away from your enemy rather than facing them head on which is going to be really awesome and changes the gameplay in general now like i said let me know what your favorite changes in that description below and are you going to be playing destiny today but as always guys if you did enjoy a like is much appreciated as well as subscribing if you guys are new around here for the latest and greatest content but as always peace out and i hope you enjoyed